And so we will record this like we have the past uh, several so that uh, if you wanna go back uh, and review the information that we share, cause it's a lot, uh, you're welcome to do that. Or for those that uh, cannot attend, they can certainly review as well. So uh, a couple of things to note uh, as we are spending time together today. Certainly mute if you're not speaking. Uh, you're welcome to unmute if you have um, something to offer. We'd love it if you'd raise your hand so we can acknowledge you in a respectful way. Uh, we encourage you to keep your cameras on, love to see you, uh, but know that uh, it's a busy time, snap time, those kinds of things. So can understand uh, taking care of those needs uh, as you see fit. Uh, we are welcoming uh, questions and thoughts in the chat. Uh, you will meet uh, our team in just a little bit, um, and they will be managing that uh, and helping to ask questions or answer your questions. Uh, we will be doing some polls today. Um, I think most of us are uh, pretty savvy at Zoom, but if you uh, have not participated with polls before, don't worry if you don't get to answer it on time or um, if you can't get to it, it's okay. Um, We'll just get a feel for those who can, and that's just fine. Uh, there will certainly be a couple of times for question and answer, uh, and we would welcome uh, questions throughout our time together today. Uh, we'll also be asking uh, you to participate in a survey after the meeting. Uh, that's really uh, for our purposes to better understand uh, what you've learned and what we need to do better with, um, and maybe some opportunities for us um, to present content in the future. So those are some of the things we'll be uh, working with today. Next slide. So we'll just do some brief introductions. Like I said, uh, I'm Christy Opsimer. I am the Director of Systems for Great Start to Quality at the Early Childhood Investment Corporation. Um, and I wanna welcome the assessment team here at ECIC. They are going to spend some time with you today talking about on-site observations. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jen Roundtree. I'm a trainer and consultant with Great Start to Quality. Perhaps you attended some of the trainings that we've done on class and ERS. Great to have you here this afternoon with us. And I'm gonna turn it over to Kristen Howard. Good afternoon, everybody. So glad that you're spending uh, some time with us today. I'm Kristen Howard. I am the assessment manager with Great Start to Quality, and um, I am going to turn it over to um, to Renee. Hi, Hello, everybody. My name is Renee Bryant. I am an assessor on the team. Need one second. I'm so sorry, everybody. My computer did a weird glitchy thing. Go ahead, so Stacy. Good afternoon. I'm Stacy Trileski, and I am also an assessor on the Great Start to Quality team. And I will turn it over to Lisa. Hi, everyone. I'm an assessor on the Great Start to Quality team. Uh, my name is Lisa Bremer, and I will pass it over to uh, Haley. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining today. I am Haley Norris. I am also an assessor, and I will pass it to Amy. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Amy Marino, and I'm also an assessor. And... And I will just say, uh, Tashana Norrell will possibly be joining us. She's having some technical difficulties today. We all know how that goes. So she might be popping in uh, here with us today shortly. And um, Amber Vanderzalm is also on our team. And she's enjoying a nice, sunny, warm vacation right now. So uh, we're, we're all glad to, to be here. Thanks, everyone. Um, so just uh, to sort of get us all in the same space, this is our typical agenda. Um, we uh, walk through some welcomes, we do those introductions, and then we try to have a presentation focused on things that you've shared with us that you uh, are interested in or you have questions about. Um, and so that is going to be the on-site observation piece today. And then typically I'll share some updates or tips 
um, things that are sort of hot off the press for great search quality, and then certainly some time for uh, questions and answers uh, as time allows. So we will get right into it uh, and I will pass it back to the assessment team. All righty, so first we're gonna have our first poll. We just wanna get a temperature check. How you're feeling about the great start to quality on-site observation process. So we're hoping um, that you can put the number that best represents how you're currently feeling. Um, there's a poll that just popped up, right? Um, so how are you feeling with your knowledge of the GSQ on-site observation process? Maybe feeling overwhelmed, anxious, don't know anything, don't know enough, uh, confused or stressed. Maybe you're kind of right in the middle at the three fair, kind of need some more support or training. Um, two, slightly good and a bit unsure. Or one, I am feeling great, excited and fully prepared. We'll just give you a second here to go ahead and answer that for us. All right. So it looks like we have a good variety of, of folks here um, today with us um, feeling kind of all over with the great start to quality on-site observation process. And hopefully we're going to give you some really great information um, no matter where you're at in your journey uh, so that you can learn a little bit more about on-site observation during this, this short presentation time that we have with you today. So... Um, we're going to actually launch uh, one more little poll, and it's going to be, do you know when you apply for validation and on-site observation, you are committing to having an on-site observation? So yes or no, do you know when you apply for validation and on-site observation, you are committing to having an on-site observation? I'll give you a few seconds here to answer that one for us. And Kristen, if we could just remind um, the Resource Center staff that this, that these are for us to get information about our programs and providers. So if they could um, just not answer them. All right. All righty. So again, we kind of have a little mix of folks um, with their answer of yes or no. So hopefully we're going to answer that um, here for you um, on this slide, actually. So you're going to see on this slide the steps in the quality improvement process. And we are not going to um, spend very much time on the steps today. Um, perhaps you've been to one of our other quality connections or you've visited our website. Um, but there are several steps in the process, and I just want to, um, you to understand kind of where we are um, when you submit that application for validation and on-site observation. So you'll see uh, where that purple arrow popped up. Um, that's kind of where we're at um, in the process where I'm talking about here. So you've kind of already maybe done some preliminary things. You've submitted your self-reflection and you've worked on your goals and now you're ready. You're saying, um, it's time. I'm ready for validation and on-site observation. So um, really, this is the time um, that you're going to spend some time um, talking to your coach and um, perhaps maybe you um, have been through this process before, or maybe this is brand new to you. Um, but what I really would like to stress is when you submit that application for validation and on-site observation, it really is a package deal. Um, so in the past, um, in the previous process, if you've if you've been working with Great Start to Quality in the past, um, this might look a little bit different. Um, but when you submit that application, you're saying, okay, I am ready. I have children enrolled. I have kids currently coming. Um, I'm going to be available in the next several weeks and months um, to go ahead and have that validation and on-site observation. Um, so really just want to call that out that that is the time you're making that decision for both validation 
and to have someone come out um, right on site and do that observation. So really wanted to make sure that we um, point that out, that when you do that, you are saying that you are ready for both and you really do need to be available in the next several months. Um, another thing is you will, when you're coming through this process, you will have an option whether or not you would like to uh, get a validation phone call. And I just want to point this out because um, there seems to be a little bit of confusion. Um, if you get a validation phone call, you still are going to have a validation. You're just not going to, to get that phone call. Um, but you still would receive an on-site observation scheduling call and an on-site observation. So even if you click no, that you don't want an, uh, a phone call for your validation, you still will get a phone call uh, for scheduling that on-site observation because we have to go over some, some pretty important information with you uh, before we would come out. Um, so another thing I just really want to mention is that validation always happens before on-site observation. So you can see there on the steps, that fuchsia arrow uh, validation happens before on-site observation. And then once the validation is complete, then um, you would move into the process of getting a scheduling call for that window and, and moving towards on-site observation. Um, again, one thing, um, we're not going into a lot of details today. I know this is a lot of information and high level, but we're going to provide you lots and lots of resources so that um, you know how to find all of these uh, steps in the process. Um, one other really quick thing, um, in the past for on-site observation, we um, had a couple of terms uh, that are no longer exist. So postpone and opt out are no longer options in the Great Start to Quality um, process. So if you are coming through um, and you want to have a validation, um, there's not an option to say, mm, I just want to wait a while for my observation um, or I don't want an observation. So remember, right as I mentioned where that purple arrow is, you're making that decision um, right when you're submitting that application for both. All right. We're gonna do another poll here. Kristen, do you wanna explain what I dropped in the chat for everybody so they know what those are? Yes, thank you. My chat was not lighting up as anything in it, so I was going to check. So um, yeah, so there's more detailed information um, that Lisa went ahead and popped into the chat. Um, for you. Uh, first, there's a um, link to one of our web pages, which is going to explain um, that process a little bit more. And then also the YouTube channel with some awesome videos to help you through um, that process that we just um, kind of went over those steps in the process. There's some really detailed um, informational videos that I think you'll find really helpful. Great. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, we want to have everyone get focused on thinking about scheduling that on-site observation and how you feel about it. Um, so the statement is, I feel like there's a lot of work I need to do to get ready for an on-site observation. So it's really just about, do you feel like you've got to do all this stuff to get ready? And if you feel yes, somewhat, or no, you could answer that. And when we're ready, we'll move on to the slide. All right. So um, if you put a yes, uh, we completely understand that. Um, but hopefully I can get you comfortable after listening to this slide with a maybe or a no. Um, I love talking about on-site observation um, and I really love talking about what makes it so great in particular. So I'm really glad that I got this slide. Um, I was actually at a program last week and a teacher said to me, this is our first time coming through the process and I was terrified. Um, and we get that, um, we hear it a lot. Um, programs, teachers, providers, um, they're all stressed out and they get nervous about on-site observation. 
And we get it. We do. We have all been teachers. Um, so we have had that feeling of someone walking into our classroom and observing us. We really understand. Um, but we really hope that this presentation today can bring you from nervous to excited. Um, I was a teacher uh, long before great start to quality was a thing. So that kind of ages me a little bit. Um, I actually got my BA to teach elementary education, to teach in elementary school. Um, and found my passion was in early childhood. Um, I loved teaching preschool and early childhood. Um, I was really passionate about it. Um, I was so invested in how you could see the development of children um, in their early childhood years. It was so amazing to me. Um, I just wanted to be a part of it. Um, I loved every single child that I taught, as you all do um, and you care for. Um, and I wanted to be the best that I could be for them. Um, and so after I learned all of these new tools, these new on-site observation tools um, for the reimagined process, um, I, I got to see how detailed and how specific the feedback is and how it relates directly um, to what children need to thrive. Um, it actually made me sad. Um, I was disappointed that I didn't get a, a chance to be a, to be a part of this, to have an opportunity as a teacher. Um, that I didn't have that back then. Um, I mean, I was a good teacher. I was, I, I don't doubt that. My teacher, my, my students loved me. Um, I worked hard, I was creative, um, but um, I could have been so much better. Um, I, I just would have had the opportunity to really continuously build on my skills. And so um, thinking about that, I'm just completely straightforward. It's disappointing to me that I love this process so much that I didn't get to be a part of it back then. Um, but that makes me, of course, very excited that you all do get to be a part of this process. And I get to be a very small part in supporting you in the opportunity to, to be in this process. So the first thing that we hope you do when you get your report after your on-site observation is that you look at all the incredible work that you're doing. Um, we hope you celebrate it. Um, these reports that you're getting are validating all that hard work that you're already doing. We want you to look at those check marks and to look at all of the things that you're doing and just be like, boom, boom, boom. I'm doing all of that, all of that. That's me, that's what I'm doing. Um, we all know. We all know teaching and care of early children, um, infants, toddlers, preschoolers, um, out of school age time, it is full of challenges and it is full of long days, some days longer than others, um, but it's also so incredibly rewarding. So we really want you to be proud of what you're doing. We want you to look at those reports um, and really see the difference that you're making in children's lives on a daily basis. Um, and then, when you are ready to move on to using that report um, and, and you're thinking, I'm ready to become even better than I already am, um, you get to look through the report, you decide what your needs are, what your priorities are, and you choose what to work on. This is not us coming in and saying, we think you need to do A, B, and C. This is you looking at it and, and taking control and saying, what's important to me? What's important to my program? What's important for the kids that we're serving? Um, these observations, they're not meant to stress you out or to overwhelm you. And it's not meant to make you feel like you have to move from beginning to excelling in every category and in every tool and like by tomorrow. And um, that's not that's not the goal here. The, the goal is to take you um, being the great teacher that you are, the great provider you are, and just help you build and build and build. Um, so... Uh, I think about, I, I actually think about back when I was teaching and I, I think about these tools and I'm like, oh, I think I would have added this to my classroom and I would have added this to my teaching strategy and I would have put a little poster here and a little post-it note here for me. And knowing that I'm how I am, I would probably have everything color coordinated and I would have little check marks that I could check off. Check, did that today. Um, but that's what really it's about. It's, a, it's about deciding what you want to add to your classroom or to your teaching strategies. It's your timeline. It's your goals. Um, so now when you're thinking about on-site observation, um, hopefully you're feeling good, feeling like you're in the driver's seat, um, and we hope you're getting excited about it as you're listening. Um, we want you to uh, 
not only be open to the feedback that you're getting, but excited to get it because you're passionate about becoming even better than you already are. Um, if you can look at these reports through the eyes of this shows me what I'm doing well, and then what do I want to add to the work I'm already doing to be even better? Um, I think you'll find it's hard not to get excited. If I add this to what I'm already doing, then the kids in my classroom and my care will grow in this way. Um, and so that's, it's really exciting to me to be able to present this slide and to hopefully get you excited about on-site observation instead of stressed out or nervous. So thank you. We're gonna move on to Amy. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, my name is Amy Marino, and I'm gonna give a brief overview of the tools that we use. And I have I have to absolutely agree with Lisa on, um, I was also a pre-K and kindergarten teacher for years. And I really do wish I would have been able to go through this process, just like Lisa said. Um, I have learned and picked up so much just from um, learning each tool and I just, I truly believe, you know, we all can improve in some way. Um, and I just think these tools help, help us do that. And, um, we're just here to support you to do that. So I totally agree with Lisa. Um, so in the quality improvement process, there are three tools that we use for on-site observations. Um, and before I start getting into those, um, this poll is, I know there are different observation tools used by Great Start to Quality for the on-site observation. So just yes or no, do you know that there are different tools used? And I'll give you a second to answer that one. Okay. All right, so after this slide, hopefully this will give you a better idea of the fact that there are different tools and which ones you should use. So um, in the quality improvement process, like I said, there are three tools that we use um, when doing your on-site observations, CLASS, ERS3, and SELPQA. CLASS, or Classroom Assessment Scoring System, focuses on interactions between staff and children, uh, quality of conversations and relationships, and the overall climate of the classroom that's being observed. And with this tool, uh, we can observe infant, toddler, and pre-K classrooms, plus K through three for some programs. ERS3, or the Environment Rating Scale, third edition focuses on interactions and conversations, but also we will look at things like materials, displays, um, and safety in the indoor and outdoor environment as well. And with this tool, we can observe infant, toddler, uh, early childhood, and home-based childcare. Um, it's important to note with this tool that Great Start to Quality uses the third edition of the ERS scales. So be sure that if you're borrowing or purchasing a scale book, um, that it does have the three on it because that is the specific ERS tool that we use. So just make sure you're using the third edition. And finally, uh, we use the SELPQA, which is Social and Emotional Learning Program Quality Assessment Tool. And um, this tool is used for school age programs, K through 12. It focuses on the social and emotional well-being of school-age children in programs like Latchkey or um, other before and after school or summer programs. And again, this tool is used only for school-age children. Uh, and then there's just a few other final points with the tools. Um, in many cases, programs can choose which tool to use, so you can choose which one you want. Um, but in some cases, there will be specific tools that the program must use because of the age served or uh, specific offerings your program might have. So for example, programs that are GS, RP, and Head Start classrooms, all early childhood classrooms, they must use class. So if you are GS, RP, and Head Start, you have to use class. That's the tool that we use. And then also um, just taking consideration 
uh, class and ERS tools cannot both be used for one program. So you can't, you know, choose class for one room that you have, like the toddler room, and then go over and um, use ERS for, for the preschool. Um, the program has to choose one or the other. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but if there are no questions on that one, I'm just going to go ahead and hand it back to Kristen. All righty, we are going to do another poll um, before we get into um, some really great resources. So um, this poll is, I have participated in a great start to quality on-site observation, or I've watched a recorded webinar, or maybe even uh, done one of the on-demand trainings. Um, and that's just yes or no. All righty. Um, well, hopefully you're going to learn about some of these great resources and um, and maybe you'll take advantage of some of these things uh, once you're once you're aware of them. So as Amy mentioned, there are three different tools uh, used by Great Start to Quality for the on-site observation. And so how do you choose, right? That's one of the biggest questions we get. How do I know what to use? How do I choose? Well, um, to really find out what tool is right for you, we really have some resources to help you out with that. Um, and Tashana is going to be dropping several links in the chat. So um, just because we want you to have all of these resources on hand, um, you're going to be kind of watching uh, for those to come through. And it might be some things you might want to even bookmark. Um, and be, refer back to um, or save those links so that you can refer back to some of these resources. Um, so one of the first things I want to mention is the resource center staff. So you have local uh, folks at your local resource center um, who can really help you along the way um, with the entire process, but also with um, selecting which on-site observation tool is right for you. Um, again, Tashana's putting that stuff in the, in the chat. There's a phone number. You can use the website um, to make sure that you're really working with those local folks um, in your area uh, because they're there to support you. Um, the other thing is we have on our website um, dedicated pages for each observation tool. So there's a class um, page, an ERS page, and an SEL PQA page right on our website. And again, those um, have helpful links, lots of great resources available on there. And then um, there is a reflection activity um, that also your local resource center staff has um, access to, um, but also Tashana is putting in the chat um, for you to really take a deeper dive and do some reflection on what type of feedback you like to get back because um, each tool will really provide you some different kinds of feedback. So a lot of it is just in what you prefer and what your um, goals are and what you really um, want to get out of it in terms of your feedback. So um, those are some things um, that will help you with tool selection. There's also a training um, that is an on-demand training um, in my registry called What Tool is Right for Me? And we encourage you to, to take a look at that training and, and take some time to do that training too, as that will really help you decide. Another great resource is the self-assessment tools for both ERS and SELPQA. And these can be done at any time, whether you're currently going through the process or not. Um, there is a quality indicator um, in the self-reflection specifically around doing the self-assessment. Um, but no matter what observation tool is right for you, doing a self-assessment um, will really give you an idea um, of those quality pieces, the environment and the experiences for the children in your setting. So we really encourage you, um, you can do it more than once. Um, you might want to make it a practice to, to do it quarterly or monthly or um, however you would like to use that. It is available right on our website, and it really is a great opportunity to, for you to do some self-reflection on um, what you can do to improve the quality in your setting for those children. So again, um, that is on our website. It's available in four different languages. 
and really should be done with frontline staff um, and some time taken to really reflect on the results and again, maybe make some goals from that. Um, so doing those self-assessments is just another little resource uh, to help with continuous quality improvement. And it might just make everybody, um, all the staff more comfortable when it is time for an onsite observation. Maybe um, you're a provider that uh, Lisa mentioned that's really nervous. Um, by doing a self-assessment, it might put you a little bit at ease because you kind of know some of the things that, that are being looked at. And then um, many, many training options are available for help um, with the tools, like I said, tool selection, um, detailed information about on-site observation tools. So there's some great um, trainings on my registry. Um, and we have a helpful video. Again, um, that link is um, going to be put in the chat. Um, to guide you through how to find those trainings um, and do a My Registry search. Um, there's also some recordings of trainings that are on our website. So while those are not um, for training credit, they do provide some helpful information to you if you're looking to, to view something in addition to a training um, or um, you just want to, to watch something not for credit. Those are available on our um, website. Um, another really great thing that I just want to mention, our website itself is a really awesome, um, valuable resource for you with lots and lots of information. And again, we don't have time to dive into to every nook and cranny of our website, but um, take some time to explore lots of links, lots of great videos um, on our website. And then um, one other really awesome thing is our Facebook page. Um, provides some great information as well. And everyone here on the assessment team helps with um, what's called a Tip Tuesday. And on the Great Start to Quality Facebook page, there's a little nugget on Tuesdays of information written right by the assessors. And it directly relates to things that um, all of us are seeing in the field or just some really helpful information about the tools. And again, all of this is in an effort to improve quality. So, so I hope you um, are able to check out some of those great resources. All righty, we are gonna launch another poll. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. The next poll is, I will know who is coming to do the observation. It's a yes, no, or I'm just not sure. All right, so about half of you are not sure who's coming to your program. So I'm going to um, explain that a little bit. The slide is titled, Who's Coming to My Program? There are two types of assessors. There's the Great Start to Quality Assessors. That's us. Um, we have Renee, myself, Tashana, Amber, Haley, um, Amy, Kristen, Jen, and Lisa. Each one of us comes with extensive early childhood education experience. Um, I think every one of us has been in a classroom at some point, um, and we are all very, very passionate about what we do. We Each one of us is also certified in all of the um, approved tools, the class, the ERS, and the SEL PQA. We travel statewide. We are scattered everywhere, uh, but we go where we're needed. So if there's a whole bunch of observations coming through downstate, that's where that's where we're going to be concentrated. So we we travel around quite a bit. Um, we get to see all different areas of the state, and it's really really exciting for us. Um, as we complete your observations, if we have multiple observations within your program, once we are done with them all, we will share our notes and our feedback with the coaches, who will then um, relay that information onto you and help you set up those those goals and see uh, where where you're passionate about moving forward to next. Um, and then before your observation, before your window opens, you will receive an email from whoever is your assigned assessor. That email is going to confirm your, your window 
It's going to confirm your blackout date. It's going to share contact information with us in case you do have an emergency that comes up and, you know, you want to let us know so we can adjust our um, calendars. Um, and then we also include an introductory letter. It gives a little bit of information about us that includes a picture so that you can share that with the staff, you can share that with the children, um, and it helps everybody to be a little bit more comfortable with that. There's also um, a link that Tashana is going to put in the chat if she hasn't already, and it is a link to each one of our bios so that you can take a little bit of time to get to know all of the assessment team. The other type of assessors that we have are approved assessors. These are individuals who work with early childhood education programs and providers in Michigan. They can use the class or the SELPQA, and they also have to remain reliable in those tools. Uh, they are also required to complete the Great Search of Quality Approved Assessor Certification Program, and they're not allowed to have any conflict of interest with the programs that they're assessing. Um, they can't supervise those programs. In order for you to use an approved assessor, you have to go through the accreditation process with either NAEYC or NAFCC, or have an agreement whose operation is overseen by an external partner. So GSRP, Head Start, Early Head Start, 21st Century Learning Community Centers, and some local preschool programs. If your program is planning to use an approved assessor, it's a good idea to talk about this with your resource center staff, and then make sure that you have the name of the approved assessor when you um, schedule your observation scheduling call so that you can make sure that you communicate that information. Um, with all of that being said, I'm going to pass the torch over to Haley, who's going to talk to you a little bit about on-site observation. All right, before I do that, we're gonna launch another poll. So this one, um, I know Stacy touched base a little bit on it just now, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it, but I am aware I can reach out to my assessor if there is an emergency which would prevent them from coming to do the observation during the scheduled window. Yes or no? And it looks like most of you were listening. Uh, the answer is yes. So let's get into a little bit more about this. Um, so before we come out to complete your observation, uh, there's some important information that we need from you. Um, so schedules. Um, so your blackout days are very important to get to us before your window begins. Um, if during your scheduling call, you're not sure what those days are, which could be the case, and that's totally okay. Uh, we just ask that you reach out to us um, whoever your assigned assessor is, um, as soon as you know those days. Um, and that should be before your window begins because we may come on day one of your window or we may come on the last day. Um, so unless a day is blocked out, all days are fair game. Uh, we also plan our arrival times to make sure we're seeing a good portion of activities during our observation time frame. Um, therefore, um, knowing your current daily schedules is important to us, um, which should include outside times for each classroom, which is also important because not, there is a tool, the pre-K class, um, that does not observe these outdoor free times. So we want to make sure, if that's the tool you're using, that we visit during a time um, when outside time doesn't take place. Um, we want to make sure that we're observing your regular staff. So those teachers that the children are with day in and day out. Um, we know sometimes directors wanna pop in and do some teaching when they're in there, but it's really important for us to see a typical day because um, this allows us to give you the best feedback as possible. Um, we need to know if there's been any classroom changes made since your scheduling call. Uh, maybe you had to combine your school agers with your preschool at the end of the day. Um, or maybe you finally got enough children enrolled to open that toddler classroom. Um, it's important for us to be made aware of these because it may affect the classrooms we're assigned to observe. And then most importantly, we're aware things happen um, and we're here to support you. Uh, so with that, we ask that you please call or text or email us. Um, that will all be in those emails that we send you 
um, introducing ourselves. If your program happens to have to close due to an emergency um, or the weather or an illness, um, these little nuances, these can be outside those five blockout days because we do understand that with that 30 day window, anything can happen. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Rane, who will go a little bit more in depth about the on-site observation process itself. Hello, everyone. Before we get started uh, into the process and what it looks like, we have a poll. The poll is asking, will an on-site observation last all day? Answer yes or no. All right, most of you have answered no, good. Well, let's jump into what an on-site observation looks like. But before that, let's talk about a couple of terms that I wanna just kind of focus on. Uh, the terms um, email, you will receive an email from the assessor that selected to come and do an observation at your site in that they'll include a picture, a little bit of information about themselves and they will confirm your window and your block out days. If any of that information is not correct, or you may need to add a different blockout date, please contact the assessor. Uh, their information should also be included on the email, and that will uh, give you the best direct access to that assessor. All right, so when an assessor comes out, we will be doing a lot of note taking. Uh, we will also be moving around the space to take notes, so please try to um, just not focus on us. Do not allow us to make you nervous. We'll try to be as quiet as possible uh, in your space. Uh, depending on the tool that you use uh, or that you choose, the assessor will be taking inventory of materials or possibly leaving out of the classroom a, a few times just to compile some notes after a cycle. Uh, and that um, will specifically be to the class tool. There are uh, four cycles that we may need to step into a different quiet space to go over our notes for. So we may be coming in and out, but again, we'll be respectful of your space and we'll do that quietly as possible. Uh, the uh, assessor is observing the teacher or teachers in the room uh, during a typical day. Uh, and we wanted to just make a point that we are not typically uh, in a classroom that is being taught by the director. So I know that there's sometimes a need for the directors to feel that they need to come in, but we uh, would actually prefer to just be able to uh, observe the teachers because it's a typical day. We're looking for a snapshot as to what happens in that room. Uh, when the assessor is finished, we will let you know and we will give that teacher a card to inform them of what to expect next in this process. You will not get your results the day of the observation. I wanna repeat that. You will not get your results the day of the observation. Um, the results will be delivered to the program by the coach from the local resource uh, center. And a summary report will also be published on the classroom tab on my registry. Now, please keep in mind, it does take time for results to be given. And all assigned classrooms for that site will need to have their reports completed before the entire program will receive results. So if there aren't any further questions about this specific area, I want to pass it to Kristen. All right, I know we've given you a ton of information in a short amount of time, lots of links in the chat, lots of um, information, but hopefully this has given you a little bit more uh, information and helped with your comfort level. So we have another poll. Uh, now that you've been given a bit more information, how comfortable are you with your knowledge of the Great Start to Quality on-site observation process? So, um, Feeling overwhelmed or anxious at a five all the way down to fully uh, excited and prepared and good to go at a one. Um, we hope that this has provided with you with enough information that you're you're feeling a little bit um, better 
from where you started um, earlier. And um, again, we know that there's a lot of information that we gave you today um, and, and hope that we um, maybe debunked a couple of myths about on-site observation and that you're really feeling comfortable with um, with the assessment team because uh, we we are really great people, honestly, and you don't need to be scared of us. Um, so with that, uh, we're gonna open it up to some questions about anything that you heard today in our presentation from the assessment team. If you have something specific about what you heard, um, feel free to pop it in the chat. Feel free to unmute, raise your hand, however you would like to do it. Um, if you have any questions about on-site observation uh, that you would like to present, now would be your chance. I have a question. Yeah. So our expiration date is in August. So how does that work for our program ends in May? How does that work for our observation? That's a really good question and one that's being asked quite a bit. Um, I would definitely um, encourage you to talk to your local resource center staff to talk through um, where you're at, where you want to go. Um, it really is program specific as to um, all of those timelines and what works best for each person. So it's hard for us to give a very specific um, date, like you should start here and end here. Um, so I really do encourage you um, to do that. With that said, um, we have a lot of you guys coming through the, the process, which is so exciting. There is just a, um, a lot of programs coming through. Um, and so uh, we do, due to the high volume, uh, we are already scheduling um, folks out um, for several months. So maybe some of you are on this um, call today that uh, maybe you have a window all the way out into April already. So um, just keeping that in mind, uh, but I would definitely encourage you as soon as possible to talk to um, the folks at your local resource center if you haven't done so. And um, we can we can make sure to figure out the best plan for, for your particular case. Lots of same fair sight. We know a lot of folks um, close for the summer, right? That is definitely, that is definitely something that happens. Um, and um, if we can't get to you before, again, depends on where you're at in the process. Maybe you haven't started. Maybe you're already, you know, waiting for a validation. It just really depends. Um, maybe you are waiting for that um, scheduling call. So, again, it just depends on where you're at in the process. Um, depends on, you know, if you're if you're going to get one um, or not before summer. Um, I do want to say um, a lot of programs um, that are closed for the summer, depending on your funding type. Again, Stacy had mentioned about approved assessors. Um, if you're a GSRP or Head Start that closes in the summer, you might have somebody already coming out and doing a class observation. Um, definitely get a hold of that person because uh, they might be able to become an approved assessor for you. What if your whole team is moving sites in the fall? Um, so I think Carol, um, we might be able to help you with this maybe offline. I'm gonna put our email address in here as well um, that you can definitely send some um, additional questions to. Um, so if the, the whole team is moving, it just depends, um, I'm not sure quite what you're asking. So we can definitely um, talk about that offline. Looks like Christy is unmuting. Yeah. So Carol, um, the quality level is connected directly to the license, right? And so um, that makes a difference in the conversation. Like, are you asking, should you start now and then do it again? Uh, but remember that your quality level is connected to your license. So if you want a quality level for that new license, you would have to start the process again. 
Um, we have a really great question in the chat. When will we get the call that they will be coming? Really great question. So once your validation um, is complete, um, again, due to the volume that we have, um, everyone in the order that they come out of validation gets placed on a list. And um, we go ahead and call in the order that they um, come out of validation. So um, shortly after your validation it can take some time it is taking time um i will be honest it will due to the volume it is taking some time to get to you but if you've had your validation know that that on-site observation call is coming and um we will be asking you um some questions during that call that you really i know was mentioned in the presentation but um confirming your classrooms is a big one um and making sure that what you put in um, my registry, maybe when you did the application is still true, or if we need to make some adjustments um, and really making sure we have an accurate picture of, of what um, your setting looks like so that we can um, know how many observations you need. Um, it might be, um, you know, wise, definitely wise to have that prepared. And then the other thing that is really important to know is what observation tool you're going to use. So it's really, really important during that call that you are ready to go with that observation tool choice. So that's why I kind of mentioned it when we were talking about the steps of the process, like kind of early on, it's something really important to talk about as you're going through the entire process and not just um, right before the observation. It's something that, um, you know, those trainings and those resources that I mentioned uh, will be very important for you to, to do um, along the way um, and then be ready at that scheduling call with your tool choice. Um, question about um, threshold scores. Yeah, so on our website, there's the threshold scores. So to um, to get to the demonstrating quality uh, quality level, uh, you have to meet the threshold scores, which are available on our website. And um, if you're looking at class, yes. Um, so the four cycles are taken into consideration and it's an average of those cycles. So the scoring um, definitely um, gets put together um, to come up with those um, final that final score. And that will be on your summary report. And um, again, every classroom that's observed would have to meet those threshold scores to um, for the entire program to uh, move to the demonstrating quality quality level. And then um, for those that might just not quite make the threshold score, you're going to get some either way, you're going to get some amazing feedback. And um, a question is, well, do I do I go all the way back to maintaining health and safety? Where do I go if I don't meet the threshold score? And that is enhancing quality validated. So uh, the quality level would be enhancing quality validated if you don't um, meet the threshold scores for demonstrating quality. All right, we have some other important updates um, that I'm gonna turn this over to Christy for. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. I'm getting a lot of direct messages in the chat, and so I will just share with everyone. Yes, this uh, is being recorded, and we will certainly send it out to everyone that's registered. Um, it also lives on our website, so if you ever need to come back to it, um, you can find it there, and we always send it out in the Loop newsletter. So for those of you who uh, who chimed in late, yes, that is exactly why we record it, and we will share it with you. Okay. Just two things really fast because we're running out of time. Um, many of you have reached out and said, oh my gosh, my profile is not right. Um, and, and why is that true? And so um, I just wanted to give you all an update. Um, this is what your profile probably looks like right now, which indicates that uh, you have no date of last inspection, which we know can't be true. Um, otherwise you can't be licensed or operating. And some of you might have a date of corrective action plan when you've never had a corrective action plan. Um, and that's because the information that we're getting from CHIRP, um, which I see is spelled wrong, um, is uh, inaccurate. And so we're actually working on that uh, in this very moment. Um, and we're hoping to have that resolved um, tomorrow or Friday. 
Um, and so those pieces will look a little different and they'll actually be links to your reports uh, so that families can transparently, transparently get to those things um, pretty easily. So I'm sorry that it looks, uh, it looks off uh, and inaccurate and we are working to uh, fix that as soon as possible. So appreciate your patience with that. Um, and the next thing I wanna share with you, <laughs> and I will throw, excuse me, um, the link in the chat real quick. There is a new systems video uh, that's available that you'll see this is my registry's website. Uh, and this is where we're housing, thank you to Shauna, uh, where we're housing this video, but it's actually a video all about the early childhood system in Michigan. So what is LARA? What is Great Start to Quality? What are the quality standards? Um, what is TEACH? You know, so uh, really great uh, way for you to share with uh, maybe new staff so that they can understand the whole ecosystem um, of early care and education in Michigan. So really great tool. It's that little orange video there. Um, it was created before my leap uh, was sort of uh, introduced um, and moved from MDE. So know that that has not been yet updated, but a really good uh, resource for you to share with folks. Um, okay, I see something from Amy here. Oh, can we get a document of all the links? Sure. Yeah. I will put that together. It's a lot. There are a Use lot that. of resources. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. We will put that together for you. Not a problem. All right. So in our last two minutes, any other questions related to GSQ, maybe not specifically assessment? Um, if you have them, we would be happy to field those for you. Yeah, and I would say if all else fails, go to the GSQ uh, YouTube channel. Everything is there um, and in a uh, an order in which sort of the process goes. So uh, if you forget all the links, then we, you know, we can't get the document out to you, go to the YouTube channel. Good, good, good. Thank you to the amazing assessment team uh, for the presentation today and all the good nuggets they've shared. Uh, I just wanna share with you all, our next uh, opportunity for the Quality Connection is April 10th. So we do this bi-monthly, um, it's from one to two again. Uh, and I would imagine my amazing colleagues have put that registration link in the chat. Uh, we will also share that uh, through social media um, and in our, in the loop, uh, our newsletter. So please share that with your colleagues. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again in a couple of months. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we know how valuable it is. Have a great day.